And so we are continuing the series today, a week two of peace on earth, as we again focus on Christ and on the Advent season and all that he brings uh, with this Christ child. And so as we are, um, again, looking at this and and focusing on the Christmas story, and we are this year focusing in on Luke chapter 2 um, and the interaction that, uh, again, the shepherds have with the angels and then with the Christ child. And as we, again, are studying this, again, kind of our theme verse that comes in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, um, it says that glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. And as we look at this verse, again, again, part of the reason we give gifts at Christmas is because of the gift that we have in Christ and in the Messiah and all, of, and all that he brings. And again, um, as we see, we're focusing this year again on peace and the peace on earth and the peace that he gives. And um, as we see that, and as we're continuing on in this story today, we're going to focus on just two verses today. And these verses are found in Luke chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And so if you do have your Bible with you, um, I encourage you to open it up with me um, as we read. And and if not, there are Bibles available for you uh, in the seat pockets that you're welcome to use. So as you open up to Luke chapter 2, and we we are looking again last week at this, the story of the shepherds and their interaction with the angels and how they reacted with fear. And the angel says, hey, this is good news. And then continuing on at verse 11 where it says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Now, as we see this again, see again the fact that, that, again, what was the good news? Well, the good news was the Messiah has been born. Right, that the Christ is here, the one that has been foretold, the one that we have been looking for um, has been born. Right? And, um, and then notice, though, as well, in these verses, in verse 12, it says, you will recognize this baby by this sign. Right? And then he said, then again, the angel says, this is the sign that you're looking for. You're looking for a baby, not just anywhere, but in a manger. Right now, a manger was something, again, that shepherds knew all about because a manger was a feeding trough, right? And so he said, yeah, you will find the right baby will be the baby that's in a manger. And that also, that baby will be wrapped in strips of cloth. And this will be the sign, first and foremost, that that's the right baby. But then I think as we read that, think about that, though, is Again, what what does a sign do? Well, a sign tells us information. A sign points us to something that we need to know. Right now, um, so as we think about that, saying, okay, so the sign, the manger is the sign. And what does the sign say? What does it show us? What does it tell us about the Messiah? Because again, signs are supposed to tell us stuff. They, they, um, again, give us information. And You know, sometimes though, signs can be confusing. Sometimes we might see a sign and be like, "Uh, I don't understand what that sign is trying to tell me. Like, for example, if you're driving and you come across this sign, you're probably going to wonder, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Right? Is it, is it one way or is it two? Right? Do, I mean, which, which way do I go? Right? Again, it does not really make sense. Now, um, again, there's signs sometimes when, depending on how they're given, and and again, can be very confusing, kind of like this one um, is also confusing, okay? Um, Again, now each individual sign itself makes complete sense, right? But when they end up on the same post, right, suddenly it's very confusing. Well, are pets allowed? Are they just not allowed if they're not on a leash? I don't don't understand. And and again, they, um, again, this one you can understand, all right? They just kind of put on the wrong post, but again, there are some signs that just make no sense at all. Hey, and, well, is it garbage or is it trash? I'm not really sure, <laughs> right? If, again, if you get in trouble for putting trash, you'd be like, no, it's not trash, it's garbage. Right? And again, the, the sign doesn't really tell me anything, right? And then, you know, sometimes those signs can just 
be honest and just tell us the truth, kind of like this one. Okay? Good luck. <laughs> right? Good luck. Uh, there's, or not really sure, right? But good luck. Okay, again, signs tell us lots of different things. And so, again, the question I want to arise, again, that we're asking today as we read this text is, what does the manger tell us? Right? Because the manger was given as a sign. Right, so what does the manger tell us? Um, again, is it confusing? Is it, is it clear? How do we interpret what the manger is supposed to tell us? All right, there's a few things I want to point out this morning. Number one is that the manger is a sign of humble service. Okay, the manger is a sign. Again, the manger is a sign of a lot of things, but um, we see, again, in this story with the shepherds that the manger is a sign of humble service. Now, Jesus who is our peace, as it tells us, was born in the city of David. Now, David was a very famous and popular king of Israel. And again, that was part of the prophecy that was given, was that the Messiah would be in the line of David. And so Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the city of David, one of the cities of one of the most revered kings of Israel, And Jesus, our Savior, the Messiah, comes as a sign of peace. And yet, this child will not be found in royal robes and wearing a crown. But he will be wrapped in bands of cloth. This child of peace will not be found in a palace, sitting on a throne, but lying in a manger. God's sign of peace is not born in privilege and prestige, but among the poor. Peace is not a signed decree, but it's a person. Peace is not rhetorical, it is very practical. Peace is not a thought or an idea. Peace needs to be a lived out reality. And peace is not invisible, right? We see peace, it is visible through actions. And as we Think of, again about the sign of the manger and the fact that it was humble service. Again, God could have chosen any way for the Messiah to be born, right? And he chose a manger. And he chose, again, a stable. Because God, again, we see God and, and even, uh, again, that God showed us a sign of humble service in the fact that even the Messiah child even came to earth. Right, and born as a child. Again, this was not what, what people expected. Right? As they read the, the, um, again, the prophecies about the coming Messiah. And in fact, this last week in the follow-up material from last message was I had you read the, one of the, uh, again, prophecies about the coming Messiah in Isaiah. They, and again, when people had read that, it talked about a ruler and about you know, the government and the influence and the power that the Messiah would come with. And people were not expecting a baby in a manger. Okay, but the manger showed us the sign though. And I think of the fact that God, um, through sending him the Messiah, wanted to understand what it was like to be human. Right, again, God created us. He knew that, but he, from our perspective, through the Christ child, being born as a child and raised in a humble family, God, again, showed that, um, that he cared and that he would come through humble service. In John 1, verse 14, it says, The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we've seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Again, God left his throne in heaven and was sent to earth as a humble baby It was placed in a manger so that God would understand what it means to be human, right? That that was his divine plan in saving humanity was I will face the same temptations they face. And I will then through my love, I will understand who they are. And again, he did not come through a palace and he did not come through a throne, but he came through a manger. And again, in that modeled for us, it was a sign of humble service. Again, just as other scriptures tell us, right? He didn't come to be served, but to serve. All right, as we 
again, understand the manger is a sign of humble service, we also see that the manger is a sign of God's heart for all people. Right? The manger is a sign of God's heart for all people. It, we, again, as we think about that, again, the, the Messiah did not come for, for the powerful, did not come for the elite, right? The Messiah was sent for all. Okay, and again, if you think about it, if he would have come in there, and again, even if God's heart was still for all, if he started in that, then how would he think he would have alienated kind of the, again, the kind of bottom rungs of society? So instead, God did it the opposite way. He decided to come in in the most humble of ways, and then again, to accomplish his tasks from the bottom up. We see this very famous verse in John chapter three, and it's famous for very good reason. John 3, 16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And as again, we see God's heart for all people. Again, it says that God loves, right? And that is the heart of God. I mean, God is love and he loved. He didn't just love some, right? It says God loved the world, right? That, that, that's an inclusive phrase, Again, Jesus, the Christ child, did not grow up and die on a cross for some. Right? It says so that everyone can find salvation. Again, we see the heart of God that is a sign uh, for all people and that the manger points us to his heart. And even when you think about that, of who did God choose to share the manger with? Right? Because he could have, again, sent the angel to anybody right? to go and say, hey, this manger is a big deal. You need to go check it out. Right? Who did he send it to? He sent it to the shepherds. Right? Now, their culture, just like ours, has different kind of you know, levels or, or of, of in their society and, and some people that are more respected than others. And the truth is that shepherds were on the bottom rungs of their culture. And yet... That's who God decided to share the manger with, right, was shepherds. Now, again, as we looked last week at, at as the angel appears and, and tells them to not be afraid, and again, rightfully so, their first reaction was fear. And we saw last week how they were not supposed to live in fear but find peace in God. And, and then we see today, again, we see that good news that is the Christ child. And then, again the, um, again, the sign that they were supposed to go see. And, again, we can read the story. We can read the text. But um, yet, sometimes it can still be hard to really imagine what that, like, that night was like. So I want to just pause for a second and just to watch this short video that illustrates what it would have been like for the shepherds on that night. So again, as we think about, again, a sign uh, for God of all people as he shares the amazing news of the, sh of the manger with the lowly of their culture. Man has worked the field since his fall, by beast or by crop, in plenty and in drought. He must tame the land, or be tamed by it. The shepherd knows this well. He is a keeper. He is a guardian. He is a guide. And his flock, aimless in all their attempts, pulls him far away to chase their fickle hearts. How peculiar it is that God omnipotent would take the post of a shepherd. Don't be afraid. You don't be afraid. For I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, has been born this night in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the babe wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. 
A baby? A major. Glory to God in the highest! Peace on earth and goodwill toward men! Glory to God in the highest! Peace on earth and goodwill toward men! Glory to God in the highest! Peace on earth and goodwill toward men! So the shepherds left their flock and hurried to the village of Bethlehem. In society's eyes, shepherds should not be the first ones to greet the king of kings. But isn't that just like the creator of the universe? He uses lowly people to do amazing things for his glory. Right, we see again the manger was a sign, right, of God's heart for all people. And as you see again, we see that again the manger was not the only sign. I mean, we also see the star, right, as a sign, right, of the shining light that Christ would be. The peace that comes to save us did not, does not emerge from those in society who have influence, wealth, and power. But the peace of God arrives as a baby born in a small town, lying in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Jesus is our example because peace is embodied in the Son of God who came to reconcile us to God and with one another. Peace is relational and is only understood through the bonds of love. Peace is found as we become one with Christ and peace on earth is proclaimed with the birth of Christ Jesus. And Jesus has given us his peace, that he has left his peace with us, that continues to be a sign for everybody else, right, of who God is and how powerful he is and how he's working in our world today. And just as the manger was a sign of Jesus and Therefore, all of his followers, we are also supposed to be a sign of the Messiah. Because God uses all of his followers and all of our stories, right, to be a sign of who he is. Now, all of our stories are different, right? All of our journeys are different, but yet they are all include the power of God as he has changed our lives. And so therefore our lives are supposed to become a sign for everyone else, right? Of the power of God. And one of the reasons why we want to continue to, to um, make journey videos of people sharing their stories, because we as his followers are supposed to be a sign of the Messiah and the power that he brings and the peace that he brings to earth. And so that leads us then to our kind of next logical question, which is, what does the sign of our life say? Because signs can be confusing. Sometimes they maybe don't show us the whole story or point us to the truth. And if we are truly following Jesus, then our life should be a sign that shows everyone around us what Jesus is like and what he came to accomplish. So as we ask ourselves that question, what does the sign of our life really say? Let's look at scripture again. What should our life as Christ followers say? What should it say? Right? What should it be telling you? Number one is our lives should be a sign of reconciliation. Again, the gospel message is one of relationship. 
right? The gospel is about relationship. It's about the creator of our world who created um, us for a relationship with him. And our sin breaks that relationship. And so we have that deep need to be reconciled relationally with our creator. Again, um, are our lives showing that we have been reconciled with Christ? That our relationship is active and growing. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 17 and 18, it says, But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away uh, from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. He brought his good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. And now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Again, the, 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 um, the ministry of Christ was a ministry of reconciliation, right? Bringing us close to him, bringing us to him, right? And not just to him, but also to each other, to other followers. And then we also see, again, um, you know, are we reconciled? Uh, that is the start of our journey. As we think about joining the journey, that's where our journey starts, right? Is being reconciled with Christ, receiving him as our savior, receiving that gift of salvation and starting that journey towards him every day. And when we do that, when we are reconciled with God, then it starts us on that journey, which is the next sign of our lives because our lives then should be a sign of transformation, Right? We start with reconciliation of that broken relationship being mended, and then we move from there of pointing towards Christ and journeying towards Christ every day as we are transformed in who we are and how we do things. And again, how our lives and our, our hearts and our motivations um, show what we value and what we love. In Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 17 and verses 22 through 23, it, again, it tells us, again, what should our lives look like if we are being transformed? And it says, I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. That as we see that list, okay, if we are truly living for Christ, we are transformed in our heart and our mind. And the fruit of the Spirit becomes more and more evident in our lives as we continue on that journey. And again, when we see that list of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, those are things that, again, we cannot fully do on our own, right? But yet we need the power of God to accomplish those in our lives. And as we see that, again, that is actually, that is our next message series. We are starting off in January studying this list of the fruits of the spirit. And so again, we're gonna start out a new start in January, right? As a new start of saying, are we moving forward in our journey? So that is our next message series. So hopefully you'll, you'll be back in January, right? As we kick off the year and studying that list. But peace on earth and the peace of God is embodied in us, his church. As we engage in the ministry of reconciliation and in the ministry of transformation. Right? And that, again, was the ministry that the Messiah started and that we are to continue as his church. So then we become a continual sign of peace on earth. The sign of peace is seen as we restore broken relationships. The sign of peace is seen as those far and those near become one. The sign of peace is seen as we live out the command to truly love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Because Jesus is the reconciler and, is, and he showed the God's sign of peace to the shepherds. And likewise, then we are involved in the ministry of reconciliation 
and transformation as God's sign of peace every day. And as we celebrate the gift of the Messiah, again, realizing that our lives then continue to be the sign of Jesus in 2016, right? Whether it's the Advent season or the new year or any other season, right? Are we being a sign that points people to Christ? Because reconciliation and transformation, that is our journey. And does our life reflect that journey? Okay, does our life reflect that journey, the journey of reconciliation, the journey of transformation? And as we think about that and think about our own journey, okay, our actions and our attitudes then become a sign of what we value. Okay, our attitudes and our actions then become a sign of what we value because we will not find peace until what we value and our actions match. Right? And that's, again, it's easy to write down our values. It's, it's easy to declare what our values are, right? But if somebody watches the actions of your life, could they say what your values are? And, and if they did, based on your actions and your attitudes, would they match? Right? And that's where we truly find peace, is when they do. So as we think about that again, and the, the natural challenge that comes with that, I'll just say again, as a church, as we journey as a church, do our actions and our attitudes match our core values? Because we have written down and declared our core values as a church. Like they're on the front of your bulletin every week. All right, and so again, how are we doing as a church? Are we living those out? Do our actions match? So again, I just want to go real quickly as we review and look at those core values of what, again, what are we living for as Oregon Trail? Okay, core value number one is that Jesus Christ is the destination of our journey. Again, does, um, does the community, when they look at our church, do they see that? Do they see that that is our value, that we are focused on Christ? That that is what we are journeying towards? And again, I know, and again, we can do a better job with all of these, can't we? Right, and as we think about that and see those ways that we can do that, again, God is doing some wonderful, great things through our church and through those that volunteer in our church and, and through, again, through our budget and through the ministries that we're doing and through uh, everything we're doing. Again, we, I believe our heart is on Christ. Right, and again, how can we better portray that? Okay, one of the um, ways that, that we're gonna, I hope, better portray that Christ is our purpose is in how we pray. And again, the, we do, uh, as, a, as a church and as a part of our budget and through that, we support a lot of missionaries and, and, and local ministries. Okay? And um, so, and you might have noticed today in the cafe area that this, um, the walls are being repainted and some things, you know, we're working on that. And in that room, as it's repainted, is we're going to put up a prayer wall in that room. Okay? And on that wall will be put one of all of the, the missionaries and, and local ministries that we support uh, monthly in our budget will be up on that wall. And we get newsletters from them and updates and notes and, and thanks for our support. And so they will be up there that we will always see those and pray for them because prayer focuses us on Christ, right? And we will see those. And now not only will those be on that wall, but it'll also be a place that we can put our requests on the wall. But right, again, and I hope that our actions then reflect that value when people walk into our building, they say, this church values prayer, right? And they're not a church that just writes a check, but that truly supports those ministries and those missionaries and the things that are going on in our own lives and journeys. All right, next core value number two is that scripture is the foundation um, and the roadmap of our journey. The scripture is the foundation and roadmap of our journey that we take this book seriously, right? That when we come together, we study it and we're, and we're committed to not just studying our, our favorite passages, but studying the entire Bible, right? And, and then part of our journey is, is moving forward into new classes and small groups and things that get us deeper into the understanding of God's word, right? And as we continue to move forward, that the scripture becomes our foundation and our plumb line. And that if we don't have an answer, where do we turn? We turn to our foundation. We turn to our roadmap, which is 
God's holy word. Right? As, um, as we continue through our core values, right? How do, again, how do our actions reflect that we um, value scripture as our foundation? It is our roadmap. And also then, core value number three, right? It's all generations contribute to the journey. And as we look at that value, again, one of the ways that we reflect that value is when we have all generations come together in our celebration Sundays. That's why we do those, that we all come together in all generations and worship God together, right? And this next Sunday, we have all of our kids in here as we celebrate Christ together. That's, again, all generations. Again, we see that word all, right, the heart of God. All right, but also now we recognize that we do have different generations. We have different phases of life represented in our church and in our congregation because they're represented in our community, right? We also understand that there's different challenges that come with each phase of life, right? And that we'll help each other through those different phases of life, right? And that all generations are here and that all generations are contributing. And that's part of our journey is that we move from just consuming, because we all start out consuming church, Right, that we move from consuming to contributing. Right, and that we, as we are journeying forward, that we will part that process within our own lives. Right, and as we think of, again, that we will contribute in different ways as God leads us to do so. And then core value number four is that everyone is welcome on the journey. And again, when you think, again, that word everyone, all the world, right, everybody is welcome. Uh, again, everybody is welcome. And I think, is that, is that true? Again, one of the things I've heard from a lot of people as they come and as they visit it, and but the, the kind of number one comment, and when we follow up with people that have been here, is, is your church is full of loving, welcoming people. Right? And that's, again, I believe we're living out that core value. People feel that value when they come here. And we, again, want them to continue to feel that. One of the other ways that we live out that core value is opening up our building and facility to outside groups using it. Right, again, does our community feel welcome in our, in our place? Right? And um, now again, one of the policies we have when we open that up is that we have somebody from the church that is present while they're here. And the number one reason for that policy is so that they do feel welcomed by us when they're here. Right? Because again, if we just unlock the door and just let them... Let her do it. Like, yeah, that's, not, that's not welcoming, necessarily. We're not living out that core value. Now, as we all know that, again, we get more requests than we can fulfill, right, with outside groups um, to use that. Um, and we do have a team that, that is already working on that, that's scheduling that and following up with them. But we do need more people that, will, that can be here during those times, right, so that it doesn't always fall on just a few, right, that can be here to be, we're going to represent a representative of our church and say, you are welcome here and we want you to be welcome here. Because, you know, whether it's, it's a basketball group or a 4-H group or, or you know, an, an outside meeting, whatever it would be, because, you know, coming to Mini Vice to, for to play soccer in a league, because, again, I, I believe that a pickup basketball game can be the first step in somebody's spiritual journey. Right? I'm coming to watch their, their child or grandchild play soccer in Mini Vice can be the first step of somebody's spiritual journey. Right? And are we, again, portraying our values when they're here? So if, again, and that's a great kind of first, easy first step of service, right? If you are going moving in your journey to just give up a few hours in an evening to be here, you know, with, uh, with an outside group. So again, if you're interested in that, like I said, um, you can let me know or uh, write it on your card. Um, uh, Jody is, is our person that's, that's working to um, coordinate all those groups. And so, like I said, she, um, she'd love to have a team that she can just call and to be here for a cost. And it's, again, it's a lot of evenings, right? That's when they're here, evenings, weekend times. But you know, if that's something you feel led to do, we could really use your help in that. But again, do our core values match our actions? Right? Does the sign that we're portraying point people to Jesus? Because the sign of the manger pointed to God's heart and to what the Messiah was coming to accomplish, right? Um, this familiar verse we've already heard, you know, but we're reminded of John 14, 27. It says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. And again, how do we find that peace is when our, 
our stated values and our actions match. Right? And that's part of our journey, right, is, is moving forward. Because, we, again, we can admit they don't always match. Right? How can we better do that? So as we, again, think about the Messiah, think about the gift that Christ comes and the sign of the manger. Right? Again, what is it portrayed? And what does the sign of our life say as Jesus followers? Right? Is the message our lives is showing, is it pointing people to Jesus? So that is my final thought today, is that Jesus in the manger was a sign of what God values. And is your life a sign of peace? Yeah, I hope that it is. I hope that you do feel at peace. I hope that you are living out your core values of your faith as you journey. But again, it's that challenge to each of us and say to honestly ask, what is the signs of my life? And is it, are those signs telling the right things.